Welcome back. It's time for us to take a look at what the newspapers are saying. So we start with the Punch newspaper, and it leads with, well, the main story here is May 29, Tinubu gets transition report, vows to tackle insecurity power crisis. That's the major headline on the Punch newspaper. And so you have uh, some small headlines on the masthead. Airline sue Sirica as Nigeria airplanes arrive today. Page 18 is where you find details of that. Airline sue Sirica as Nigeria airplanes arrive today. Court finds lawyer 40 million naira over anti Tinubu inauguration suit. You have details of that on page 13. Health workers begin indefinite strike. FG shuns demands. Page 26 is where you have details of that. And above the masthead, you have reps insist on $2.4 billion oil sale probe. Grew Malami. Page 13 is where details of that is on the Punch newspaper. And that's all I'll be taking on the Punch newspaper. Okay, we'll move now to the Daily Independent. Daily Independence, uh, Independent rather, uh, leads with a story of uh, Buhari. I ran a good race. I have finished my course. That is what Buhari said. He confers highest national honors on Tinubu Shetima. President-elect vows not to disappoint Nigerians and Buhari. Uh, smaller headlines there at the side. Um, you will find we're aware of plans to disrupt May 29 inauguration. That's DSS. It's on page 29. Lack of trust is breaking up Nigeria, according to Edwin Clark. On page 6, you'll find the story. Sirica's action on national carrier call for anarchy, says AON. It's on page 6 as well. Ninth National Assembly, most productive in outputs, Outcomes, says Buhari, is also on page six. Court finds ex presidential candidate 40 million naira for seeking to stop Tinubu's inauguration. We also have uh, another headline Airport's concession is contempt of court, won't stand. That's according to unions. The writer is one recent appointment in Nimet may spell a doom for aviation. Okay. Um, the other headlines that you can find up there on the front page is it's juvenile argument asking why federal government still borrows awards contracts. That's according to Fashola. And then uh, finally, don't undermine Nigerians, Obi tells LP lawmakers elect. The writer there is fight temptation to cross carpet to APCs. APC says Aburi. Okay, those are the headlines from the Daily Independent. From Daily Independent, we'll move to Daily Trust newspaper. And it leads with, I have run a good race, finished my course, Buhari. So you have smaller headlines uh, there. Or rather, my administration best in road infrastructure, Buhari, says Tinubu best for Nigeria. These are some of the writers attached to the headline. Confers GCFR, GCON on President-elect and Shatima, that's a vice president-elect. I won't disappoint Nigerians, ex-Lagos governor. Uh, details of that is on page four. Um, you have, it's interesting, the newspapers, uh, the headlines this morning are pretty scanty. Yeah. And three of the four that we're looking at have the same picture of the president-elect, Ashwa Jibola Ahmed Tinubu. Mm. Well, that's all that will be taken from Daily Trust. And then it also has uh, a lot of them from yesterday till now. We have um, the person in charge of the uh, pipelines in the Niger Delta is giving felicitations in all the national newspapers. Yesterday, it was almost every one of them, and he had a significant portion of that uh, front page. And I'm talking about uh, government. I didn't Polo. want to mention it because yeah, he didn't pay to... us. He didn't pay us. For yeah. that. He must have paid but for we, this. We need you know? to know why he's taking an, so much of an interest in this. Uh, maybe our guest will tell us. Mm. Um, we also have uh, Daily Trust almost sounding the same as. Uh, was it Daily Trust you just took? 
Yeah, I just take daily independent. Yeah, daily trust. Okay, the nation now. The we, nation. we have the nation yeah. now uh, also looking almost the same as daily trust. Tinubu, I understand the magnitude of the task ahead. President-elect gets a baton of service transition documents. You'll find that story on page three of the nation. Buhari confers GCFR on Tinubu, GCON on Shatima. President, after a good race, I have passed the baton. Okay, that's what the president uh, has said. Those are the headlines on the nation. And that will be the end of uh, or the final newspaper for this morning. Okay, so we have been joined by our guests on Off the Press, Mr. Jide Johnson, Senior Lecturer, Nigerian Institute of Journalism. He's joining us from Lagos. Good morning, Mr. Johnson. Good morning. Good morning to our viewers all about the world. It's a pleasure to be with you on this wonderful Friday, the weekend to the transition to a new administration mm -hmm. across the length and breadth of Nigeria. Yeah. Okay, talking about transition, uh, let's leave those politics a little bit before. Uh, um, afterwards, we will talk about them. Let's start with the national carrier that is going to receive the first batch or maybe the only airplane of um, Air Nigeria or Nigeria Air today. Mm. This national carrier, it seems as if we it's a do or die affair. We must have it uh, done before this administration closes. What are your thoughts on how the whole process the is? The president gave an indication that if Nigeria should attack him, the Nigerian Republic could defend him. Mm. And then when he had his last Federal Executive Council, he told his minister he hoped that Daura would not be too far away from them. Fortunately, the Minister of Aviation at the Sirica is from, is from Casina State. I think this is an area in which um, um, the 10th National Assembly should set up a commission of inquiry to look at the management of the affairs of this particular ministry, particularly with reference to the issue of Nigerian hair, because there seems to be a lot of desperation on the part of meeting even the minimal deliverables with respect to the expectation. If you look at the deliverables that the ministry is trying to achieve towards the tail end of this administration and the expectation and the resources that have been devoted, then you begin to wonder why why would you be delivering just an aircraft as you are leaving? So it's, it's, it's there for us to, 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 to require the, the, the third National Assembly, particularly the ambition, or transportation committee of both the Senate and the Rep to look into this matter so that we can get to the root of it because there's a lot of things that does not meet the eye with respect to it. You recall how they went to Dubai to design to de design the logo. Mm -hmm. I think the logo was designed for close to about sixty million dollars, an assignment that I'll give to my students in school that they would do for free. We could even have organized a national competition in Nigeria for schools across the length and breadth for them to design and then we say the winner will get uh, 10 million, the winning school will get 10 million, the second school will get 7.5, and then you see the kind of logo that will come that will come out of what they have done. But you know, it's it's, it's just everybody wants to to cash out so so that every Nigerian can eat breakfast. So they are serving us breakfast left, right, and center. If you look across across sectoral area of the economy, each of the minister has done one project or the other at it tail end of the administration. And then um, uh, the former governor of Lagos State and currently the minister of, of works in his arrogant intellectual display um, said that anybody talking about people, uh, government collecting loot towards the tail end of the administration does not understand, does not understand anything. Well, the thing is that they, 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 don't, they don't face enough crossfire from the public. If they face enough crossfire at and there's, 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 there's a public engagement in which they are, they are asked. I just imagine him sitting before uh, on BBC and with art talk with uh, Shaka, and then he, he goes to her to see what he's saying. But that is what it is. They, they, they have a way of getting around things, and they have a way of insulting the sensitivity of Nigeria, because they believe that, one, they are more knowledgeable than we are, two, they are highly placed than we are, three, 
and then um, uh, they have been fortunate to be in public office for 24 a quarter of century okay well let's move on to the next which is the nation newspaper the headline there uh tinubu that's above the masthead i understand the magnitude of task ahead i understand the magnitude yeah. of task uh, ahead do you, do, do you he, see him acknowledge he, do you see that as an acknowledgement that the he's yeah. got, that this administration that is going to take over from hasn't performed see he identified two critical areas and if you look at those two critical areas why this government came into power uh, how the ridicule you know the the normal cliche 16 years of PDP's administration, mm. 16 years of PDP's administration. Uh, you recall one of the major issues in security, uh, you recall that the kidnapping of the Boko Haram um, students contributed, give the opposition a leverage to campaign cheap against cheap the, girls, the right right. Mm. Yeah, the cheap of girls, yeah. Mm. The, to campaign against them, against against the then government in power by, by the inability of the government to tackle insecurity and the rest of it. However, this insecurity situation, rather than abated, seems to be on the increase in Nigeria. We have added kidnapping to it. We have added banditry to it. We have added um, <laughs> uh, um, so unknown, as, unknown as government to it. <laughs> unknown, unknown, unknown government to it. So, if you take the issue of insecurity, which was one of the cardinal principle of what this administration, what they campaign on, on dealing with, they've not been able to solve the problem. So, it's an acknowledgement of the failure of the present administration in dealing with insecurity because the president elect said i know the task ahead. now let's talk about power for the past four weeks i've not been able to join but i've been able to join virtually through audio format but i've not been able to join uh, by by using uh, audio, using audiovisual means because we don't have power we don't have power and the accused PDP, you know, there were, I think there were seven or eight, five or eight uh, power stations, mini power stations, when Robert Sanjay was going that were established. And you were reading in the newspaper that those stations, those power stations have been con have been considered. They've been considered to private private individual without without the without public having any knowledge of it. So the issue of power has not been dealt has not been dealt with. Let's come to a major cardinal issue of this administration of coming to power: corruption. The anti corruption stance. Has corruption been dealt with? They have been, okay, let's talk about the accountant, uh, accountant uh, general, the case. The case, we don't know uh, anything about, about, uh, about that case. Now, what's going on with the case? Or is it the pension fund with, with Mena? You recall the Mena handling the, 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 the pension fund. So you can. And go on and on and on and on and on and on and on. If you just use three, 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 three sector, three sec you do three sectoral analysis that form the major cardinal uh, promises of the Brady administration. You discover that the the government failed woefully. However, in the area of infrastructure, you cannot fault the government in trying to put in place some basic infrastructure at whatever level. But I've said it: infrastructure is just ABC of public administration. Of public administration, all you just need to do is to approve money. Once you need, once you have the money, they go ahead and do the project. If you give it to eighteen year old, you approve, you approve, you approve for them to construct the infrastructure. So when people use infrastructure as the base to 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 judge, after we have provided you with infrastructure, anybody, after all, I will not provide an infrastructure for ourselves. Mm -hmm. You provide yourself your water, you provide yourself your light. You provide yourself the road that leads to your community. So what else is government do? So it's like you are building your house and you are, you are, you are, you are saying that I provide, you, you are going about telling people, I've built my house, I've built this. So infrastructure is the basic of, of public administration. So any, 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 anybody can just do it. Give it to 18 year old. All you just need to do is to have his, 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 his age and then look out for consultants and look out for those that were executing the project they bring to him, they approve it. And all of this infrastructure, what did they use to do it? The debt burden. My children, your children, and their children's children will still come up to pay up for the debt burden of the infrastructure. So, even in the area which they are performed, there are still some questions that need to be asked. Okay, um, another worrisome thing that has just happened from last night uh, is the strike embarked upon by Johesu, uh, the, the nurses, the junior um, uh, health workers. And uh, their demands are not 
uh, not being met and they are complaining that a lot of things are going wrong. So Johesu is on strike and no, no, no sign that the government is concerned about this strike of the very critical sector of our economy and our health life as a nation. What are your comments on that? Well, um, the nurses are on strike. So the nurses are on strike. Why, why should it be surprising to announce? Right? They don't patronize our nurses. They don't patronize our medical facility. They engage in medical tourism. The president traveled abroad for medical for medical treatment. The president-elect traveled abroad for medical treatment. Ike Kirimadu took the daughter abroad for surgery and he got himself, he landed himself in problem. Um, we knew the wife of the chief who died in the United States of America after a brief illness. So it's, it is what you patronize that you understand the critical problem of that sector. And yet the National Assembly is coming up with them passing a the bill to ensure that once you graduate in Nigeria, you cannot you cannot leave Nigeria until five years practicing this, practicing that. As far as as far as I'm concerned, um, that particular sector, if you look at how many times have nurses gone on strike under this administration? That's even the health sector. Doctors gone on strike. What is the rate of brain drain in that sector? If you're in that a sector and you have used money to train yourself and there are better opportunities in better society where there is light constantly where your salaries are paid when your earn allowances are paid as at when due and when there are better condition working condition and better standard of living for your life you will go it's just a matter of time if the president can go abroad to treat his tooth is here and then the president elect can go abroad to, to to rest and do whatever he wants to do then every again is entitled to that to go abroad. So they don't really care about, about the health sector because they don't patronize it. It is what you patronize that you care about. And we have said it, there should be a national law that says that you use Nigeria, patronize Nigeria, Nigerian first. Your children must go to Nigerian school. You must patronize Nigerian here. You must you must use everything Nigeria in whatever you do. If you believe so much in this country and you want to be our leader, it's leadership by example. It is what leaders, children look at what parents do, not what they say. And in governors, we could liken um, the, those we have elected to be parents. And then when they travel abroad, so that's how you like to travel abroad. So why should, why, should, why should nurses or doctors or people in the medical industry not travel abroad? Because these are areas in which, they, and that's why I commend, uh, I commend the vice president, that's Professor Yemi Oshibadu. He, when he had to make use of surgery, you have not heard him of going abroad. He was of Dutch's International Hospital. And you know the funniest thing? In this hospital, they are going abroad. Majority of this hospital, most of their consultants, most of their specialists are Nigerians. Why can't we put an enabling environment that will make Nigerians in diaspora, that will make Nigerians in the hospital to come back home and help build this economy. You look for the best engineer. You look for the best doctors. You look for the best aides. What is it that students that have passed and taught class in Nigeria, when they travel abroad, they are coming out with flying colors, winning awards. There's some. There's a systemic problem that we have across sector in Nigeria, across across sector. And the earlier we look into it, the earlier we deal with those issues, the better. And it, has, it starts with leadership. And that's just what Mark, John Maxwell said. Everything rises and falls on the leadership. If the leadership does not believe in Nigeria, then Nigeria will not try. That's my own. Okay. Um, just finally, because we've run out of time, um, I would like your comment on the, the, the comment of... Uh, uh, Buhari, that says that the National Assembly, the Ninth National Assem Assembly, is the most productive of all the assemblies we have witnessed. Do you, uh, are you well, also of the same school of thought? In terms of, in terms of output, no doubt. In terms of output, turning out bills and what have you, um, their, their first function, which is, um, which is law making, they, they are very, very productive. There's no doubt about that. If you look at some, if you take uh, the passage of the PIB and then the Electoral Act, even though there are issues with compliance or no compliance with the Electoral Act, you, you agree that um, the Ninth Assembly is monumental change and attempt to devolve power to the confederate to the confederate to the federating units of the state. Uh, the only area where uh, the most states don't pass is the local government autonomy, but there are areas in which 
um, some 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 items on the uh, on the exclusive list have been taken to 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 the concurrent concurrent list, which both states can both participate in it. You, you said that, but in terms of oversight function, they've not really done well. Um, the president will say so because every time he asks them for a loan, both the head of the National Assembly, the reps, and the Senate, they don't even open it for debate. They just approve. There's a particular case that is ongoing where the rep, House of Rep members are accusing the leadership of changing them in terms of the 30, 30 allegedly, we don't have the facts, allegedly, that they, that, that they were promised $30,000 for them to, to approve the, the, the loan that the president asked for, and they only paid 10000 And you can see the drama that happened between the, the speaker and his deputy and so two days ago, when they were exchanging, whether when he said we should postpone plenary and the rest of it. So, the president has the right to say what he has said because uh, they, they've always been a rubber stamp. That's my opinion, and I'm, I'm entitled to it, and I'm fully persuaded and convinced by it. They've been, they've been a rubber stamp uh, uh, National Assembly. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Jide Johnson for your time and insight yeah, this morning on Off the Press. It's is it, is it, is it a pleasure, it's a pleasure to be with you. And then those that run the government are grown. Uh, it, uh, it, for 16 years, they've come back and they've placed adverts in all of the newspaper. Um, it's, 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 it's such a funny country, whereby you, you reward criminality. And then you have, you have people that should not be allowed in sin society, having access and control to state, state institutions and to state power. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Jide Johnson. Uh, well, this is uh, where we round off on Off the Press. We are going to take a break. When we return, we'll be looking at some other issues, and uh, that will be on uh, technology and media. Oh, sorry. <laughs> we'll be talking with our guest, and he will be um, the hot giving, insight, our very first giving hot insight to the first hot topic that yes. we're having today. Stay with Stay us. Stay with us.